All right, top of the morning, Majorno. It's your boy, Big Rich, Queens, New York City, where we get busy. Mob Stories, Season 2, gentlemen, knock before entering, wipe your feet on the rug, and throw some smoke in the atmosphere. It's time to get down to business. Steve Creer Jr. is sentenced to jail for 13 years and got three more years than if he would have copped to the murder. Mob Sky on Stevie. Steven Jr. Creer got Gangland's Best Plea Decision Award of 2019 for agreeing to take up to 13 years in prison instead of facing life for murder if convicted at trial, which is what happened to his dad. In hindsight, though, he may have made a big mistake. I don't think so. If the man didn't do anything, then he didn't have to cop to the plea. I don't think that's a mistake. He could have taken the Fed's plea offer, which called for a maximum of 10 years if he agreed to plead guilty to a role in the gangland-style slaying of former Purple Gang leader Michael Meldish. Nothing do it, said Kriya, insisting he was not involved in the conduct in any manner. Having refused to make that admission, Stevie Jr. was sentenced to 13 years in prison. When he appeared... In front of, when he appeared in front of White Plains federal judge Kathy Seibel, who believes mobsters deserve more time behind bars than other defendants who are convicted of similar crimes because of the commitment to a lifetime of crime as a Costa Nostra member. The sentencing, the sentencing memo that trial prosecutors Hagen Scott and Cecilia Cohen and Alexandra Rothman submitted to Seibel indicates that Stevie Jr., who passed a lie detector test about the Meldich rubout, given by a former FBI agent, should have flushed his principles down the toilet instead of sticking to his guns about the 2013 killing. Creel, 47, pled guilty to three specific crimes carrying a total of 13 years, five for racketeering, five for a conspiracy to commit murder, and three years for a conspiracy to commit assault count based on the same failed murder conspiracy count. Prosecutors asked Seibel to reject a plea by Korea's lawyers for a little leniency based on the government's plea offer of 10 years. They argue his 13-year deal is a bargain, and the judge should have given Stevie Jr. the maximum because she learned during the trial that Korea Jr. ordered other members of his crew to murder Meldish for disrespecting the family's acting boss. Matthew Madonna. As proof, they cited two things. The controversial testimony by jailhouse informer whom Seibel questioned as odd and a little weird before trial and conjecture by the government's mafia expert and a mob turncoat that if the administration ordered a mobster to kill someone, the assignment would be made by the soldier's cap. Maybe Stevie Jr. passed on the order to kill Meldish from Madonna and Stephen Stevie won the credit to soldier Christopher Landano. And maybe he didn't. There was evidence that Landano called Madonna the night of the murder, not Crea Jr. Maybe Madonna gave him the order since trial testimony established that they were close. And Stevie Jr.'s lawyer had no opportunity to question any of the government witnesses the prosecutors cited. In their sentencing memo, prosecutors tweaked defense attorneys Joseph D. Bendetto and Sid Ginsburg for discussing plea negotiations in court filings in their effort to convince Judge Seibel to impose a prison term below the maximum sentence of 13 years that he faces. But in the same memo, which confirms that they did, in fact, order Stevie Jr., a 10-year deal if he would admit the Meldish murder, the prosecutors wrote. In good conscience, Gangland assumes the 13 years allowed by statute is the bare minimum necessary to reflect the seriousness of the offense, promote respect for the law, provide just punishment, provide general and specific deterrence, and protect the public. The prosecutors don't explain why or when, but somehow the bare minimum sentence rose from 10 years to 13 years. Now, first of all, you know that Dominic Crea, the head of Justice Tech Pros, this is his father and his brother that uh, they are talking about here. And of course, I checked with Dominic before running with the story out of respect to him. Um, Again, this case, we follow this case very closely. Before I end this video, again, there was no eyewitness. There was no telephone record. There was no video record. There was no weapon. There was no fingerprints on a weapon. Nothing was found. They were convicted on the testimony of rats and dirt bags and men without honor. Men that would have sold their own fathers out, which they did. Their own brothers out. They were pimps. They were drug addicts. They were gun smugglers. Every reason in the world to lie for the feds to get a better deal for themselves. Bullshit. Bullshit. But uh, there you have it. 
Stevie Crea Jr. was sentenced to jail for 13 years. And uh, I would assume that there, you know, there's their appeal, uh, appeal uh, in process, you know. And um, again, you know, like I said, we follow this story very closely. It was uh, just a circus. That's what she's running. She's not running a courtroom. She was running a circus. Everybody have a good morning. Salute. We will talk soon. Big Rich Mob Stories, Team Ruckus. Salute.